I, I was I was giving a clinic in Moscow, <clears throat> and so I did a radio show where they translated it, you know, because I don't speak Russian. And so one of the questions was this 10-year-old boy that kept asking me the question. He said, you know, I, I have to hit a two-handed backhand, and I want to hit a one-handed backhand. What should I do? And I told him, my coach doesn't want me to hit a one-handed backhand. He wants me to hit a two-handed backhand and get rid of the coach. And I think that's what these kids should do. If a kid, <clears throat> I ask kids what they want. I, I, sometimes you can see it. When a kid hits a two-handed backhand, it does not look natural. I don't care what you say, it is a struggle. Between the person that hits a natural two-hander and a person that is not a natural two-hander, there is a difference. You can see it. And so uh, I have kids that, to me, I always tell them to hit a backhand slice. That's how I do it. I hit and I, I look for and then the backhand slice, the arm just comes straight through it, no problem. And then I ask them what they want to do. Do you want to hit a one-hander or a two-hander? And uh, they go, I want to hit a one-hander. I say, so you're going to do one-hander? Yeah, but my parents don't want me to hit a, they want me to hit a two-hander. I said, listen, okay, if your parents are going to be dead one of these days and you still be playing tennis. It's your <laughs> tennis. It's not their tennis. I said, I'm going to give a rap to ask what your parents want to do. If you want to hit a one-handed backhand, you hit a one-handed backhand. You can it, okay? But the strange part is I won't mention any names because it's uh, it's too critical at this moment, but it is a guy that is uh, very high in tennis in the United States, and he had a boy that the boy wanted to hit a one-handed backhand, and he told him, no, you're not going to hit a one-handed backhand until you're older, until you're 12. You're going to hit a two-handed and I told the parents, I said, get rid of the guy. Get rid of the guy. That is the dumbest thing you can do. You don't have a kid hit two hands, and then when he's 12, say, okay, no. If the kid is nine years old and he wants to hit or 10 years old, wants to hit one hit to a one-hander, teach him a one-hander. That's what the kid wants to do. He doesn't want to hit right. two. He wants to, he wants to look like Slater. He wants to look, that's what he wants. So teach him a one-hander. Don't tell the kid, yeah, and I tell the kid, hey, listen, okay, you want to hit a one-hander, you're going to have some problems for a while, I'm telling you, because as soon as you walk on the court, they see a one-hander, they'll hit you a high, back, a high ball to your backhand. I say, so you're going to be struggling a little bit, but you're going to overcome it. You're going to learn to pick the ball up early, whatever, whatever. No, I, I think that is so wrong. You've got to let the kid do whatever the kid, what the kid wants to do, you know? You know and then yeah. you teach them whatever they have. Well, you know, and and that story right there inspired me a lot. I I love that to see to hear someone of your caliber who is who's letting the kids decide, you know. And so so I started a new thing where every time I get a new kid on the court, the first thing I do is I ask the kid, "All right, you have parents, you have kids, and you have coaches. Who's the decision maker?" And the kid almost always thinks it's their parent or me, right? right? Say, no, no, right. you are the decision maker. It's your tennis game, right? right. And then right. we go, and then I ask them, okay, who's your expert consultant? And they say, oh, that's you. And I'm like, okay, good, that, that was quick. But then I said, all right, now who gives final approval? And they say, oh, me? I'm like, no, you, no. It's your parents because they're paying the bills. If they don't approve of this, then you're gone. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's, oh, it's they... so true, you know. But but I, I, I'm i very good at putting the parents in the place, you know. I'm very good mm-hmm. at that because I'm a big guy. I can look like I can look like I'm pissed off like crazy, and the parents sort of uh, realize, Okay, let me just listen to the guy, you know. And I, I explain. I, I do talk to the parents a lot. I love parents to get involved, you know. I love to get the because that's why I tell the kid. I say, hey, listen. And I always and I always train the kid to be very polite to the parents and show respect. I mean, I swear, the kid is rude to the parents. <clears throat> I put him at the base and I give him forty at the base line. I say, don't let him ever see you give your parents disrespect. I say, you're nuts. I said, you wouldn't be playing this game if it was for your parents. They're driving you all over the place. They're paying for it. They're, they're helping you out. Then I tell the parents, 
especially female mothers. Mother, mother, mother coaches, oh my God, they're the worst. They are the worst. And the mothers of, of kids. And I tell the mothers, I say, you know, all you have to be is a cheerleader. That is your job as a parent, mother, when your kid plays a tournament, play a match. Be a cheerleader. Don't rag on your kid. Don't don't put your kid down. Don't do that. You know, just be a cheerleader. You know, As somebody else uh, 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 discipline your kid, whatever, after a match. But don't, don't rag on the kid when they play a match. The kid is already trying his ass off, you know. He, he hates to lose. <clears throat> and then you come and you rag on him even more, it's even worse. I said, stay away from that, you know. Just, just mm-hmm. cheerleading, you know. And I tell the kids sometimes, you know, kids choke, you know. I had to go the other way with that with a parent recently because, you know, the kid, I had a kid in a tournament and he played poorly and he was like nine years old and he cried after his match. And and the mom was making fun of him because it was like, hey, why are you taking it so seriously? So I had to pull her aside and say, hey, look, he really cares about this. So don't even think about making fun of him for that. He's very passionate about his tennis and he wants to win very badly. So, yeah, absolutely support him in that. Yeah, I think the, I think the best thing is to leave the kid alone. You know, you don't just just like normal. And then if the kid wants to talk about it, fine. You know, it's just it's like normal. Just tell him you love your kid, basically. You know, and you don't have to make fun of him. You don't have to ridicule him. Just love your kid. And if the kid wants to talk about it, he talks about it. And you have mm-hmm. these parents that that don't they, they sit in the car, they won't talk to the kid all the way home because the kid lost. And I, mean, I tell the kids this when they, when they choked, you know. They say, oh, I choked. And I say, you know, from now on what you should do, you go on the court <clears throat> and you choke because you're choking because you're not confident enough in your own game and you're afraid of your opponent. For some reason, you're afraid of your opponent. I said, so what you should do, is you get on the court, <clears throat> you find out how nervous you are that you're choking, take the ball, Go up to the net and tell your opponent to come up to the net. Give your opponent the ball and say, you know, I'm, I'm so nervous right now. I'm so afraid to lose to you. I can't handle this, this, this pressure of having to lose to you. And I am so afraid. So here are the balls. You're far better off doing that because, first of all, you don't be on the court for an hour just feeling like horrible. You know, you don't, you, when you're choking and playing the match, you feel horrible. I said, so you go through an hour of feeling horrible. Then you get off the court and you feel horrible because you lost and you choke. Then on top of that, your parents are going to rag on you because you choked. And you, so I said, you're far better off. Just take the ball, tell your opponent that you're afraid to play him, tell him you're so scared of losing to him or her. And given the balls, and then you have a great day. 